had one wiper speed. I had two fan speeds for the heater. Quiet and noisy. Same volume of air being um, distributed, but it was just one was noisier than the other. Hey there. Now on this episode, I guess, of Memory Lane, we're gonna have a look at my very first car, Fiat Panda 4x4, the original 1987. I bought this car, wow, it must've been 10 years ago, just over. Um, fantastic fun, an absolute riot. Um, a thousand cc's, 45 odd brake horsepower, um, all the fury in the world though at that time, because I was 17, and I just wanted to drive at maximum attack at everything. And because it was a four wheel drive one, it meant that I could go full attack off road as well, and I did. But first, let's have a look at some road footage. I got some here. It's um, so what's maybe modest acceleration, but uh, I'm only going through the gears like mo like slightly aggressively. Um, I did never got footage of me going flat out, which I did a lot. But here you can see already the camera is vibrating. We're not even at 60. Now we're at 60. Um, <laughs> And later on in the video, um, let's go here. You can see that when you start to pick up um, some proper speed, that's when it really, really starts to vibrate. <laughs> you can barely even see what's going on. Um, here we are, right round right, <laughs> right here. Look at this. We're just. Making a down change here into the bridge section, probably in third, tight little corner there. Bog down, we're, we're rising up in the revs. I don't think it's full throttle here. I think I'm still being a bit sensible. And then later on, um, later on, yeah, we're just, just here. You can see, I think it's fourth maybe, pushing on to 70. It doesn't hang around actually. If you really, um, you know, floored it, it would go. And uh, I mean, at the time, I remember it feeling like the fastest thing in the world. Um, and I could get it to 80 miles an hour just over, which was its official top speed. Now, the interesting thing is that it was a five speed, but you got the top speed in fourth. Once you got there, you could go to fifth and, and just about hold it. Once, right, once I got it reading on the speedo, 100 miles an hour. Um, yes, it did feel like a space shuttle disintegrating through the uh, atmosphere on the approach to Earth, but uh, I don't know, maybe the speedo was a bit inaccurate as well. It was down a very long hill, obviously. Um, yeah, great fun. And whenever me and the mates went out um, in it, it was just constant laughs. Going, going over speed bumps at ridiculous speeds, the leaf suspension at the rear. Oh man, what a, what a time. It was also time for that extreme winter of 2009. I passed my test basically straight into it. So not only did uh, I have um, huge fun on the lanes, but um, I also had huge fun in the snow. I only got told off once by the old plot for doing figure eight in a car park. Um, but I paid my dues back to society when I towed a uh, Volvo S60 up a hill. Um, double the weight of the Panda, surely. But uh, I felt good about that, and it was a, a lady on her way to uh, work. She was a carer, so I feel like I, I did good there. Um, there's a little video here um, I've got of me doing donuts in the in the snow. Um, here, we, here we go. So this one. Um, just get an impression, here we go. Probably second gear, and I flick the indicator on. Everyone, yep, yeah, everyone, I'm just doing a, a, a bit of corrective lock there. Oh dear. <laughs> that was good fun. That was up in uh, Yorkshire or Scotland. I did take it up to Scotland, and uh, there are a few photos there of some truly treacherous conditions. I got it beached on the snow once. It was crazy. I had to turn around and there was basically zero visibility. Um, ugh, mad. Oh, and here are some detail shots. 
that uh, I'm sure Greg will want to clarify were not done by him, but uh, the special effects are definitely my, my doing and I'll, I'll take all the credit that anyone may dare to issue for them. Oh, the lights were terrible. The lights were truly awful. You absolutely needed the spotlights that I added. Oh, in fact, it came with spotlights and they got more powerful ones. Um, and they were really good. Um, very, very useful. Because basically the originals were like holding a candle up in the middle of the night. But uh, <laughs> what formative years for a... Uh, uh, a car guy, I mean, couldn't recommend it enough. It's difficult to pick uh, a favourite moment of my Panda ownership. I did so many miles in it, it I got it when it had 72, I think, thousand miles, and I took it over 100, I did 101 when I sold it. Um, the incredible moments in that car, as I'm sure you've had with your first car as well, I'll never forget it. Fortunately, I, I sold it to a, an enthusiast who then continued with many more great experiences. They went to Europe on me mental road trips. Um, it no longer survives, unfortunately. But for me, I was moving on and I got a Mercedes C250 turbo diesel, which was about the furthest away from a Fiat Panda 4x4 that I could possibly get. And I will be doing a, a little memory lane on that car in due course. Um, but uh, yeah, there you go. It's a bit of um, a bit of nostalgia for the old panda there. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If uh, you want to watch any more, well, wait around for that Mercedes one. In the meantime, how about watching uh, some of our road tests? Uh, here's the playlist. Anyway, until next time, thanks a lot and uh, see you soon. I mean, I should mention that it has luxurious features like a rear wash wipe. I mean, come on, add two speed fan. Mate, luxury like that does not come around easily. It even had, even had, rear seatbelts um, and a stereo, once I fit one.